Welcome back to Vampire. Let's get to know more people around Pembroke Hospital. There's a bunch of people we haven't spoken with, at least three. Let's speak with this doctor first. I think we have to wait for them to finish their animation. There we go. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Can I eat them already? <laughs> How are they doing? Uh, what's their level? Ah, oh, level four. Nah, I guess I'll leave them alive. I guess they're useful for the patients, having a doctor. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. I... I mean, I don't know what Jonathan used to do. I don't see any reason why I should justify my actions to you. That's true, Dr. Reed. The only judge has to be yourself. The question is, are you judging yourself hard enough? When it comes to killing my sister, yeah. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Aykroyd. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, Perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become... displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. I'm not sure what lines they think we've violated, but yeah, I really don't know enough about Jonathan's past to say whether they're right or not. Also, I just had a thought. We could, once we get our mesmerize up to a high enough skill, we could theoretically eat and kill every single doctor and nurse in Pembroke. Right? I don't know about Swansea. I don't actually remember if you even have the mesmerize thing when you speak with them. I don't know if they're like a protected character or not. But everybody else, if you have a, have a high enough mesmerize, you can eventually kill them. I'm just trying to imagine what it would look like at Pembroke Hospital if there were no doctors or nurses. You just killed everyone. It's just the patients left alone in their beds and then one vampire doctor of me to look over them. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position but I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Aren't you too old for such jealousy? It really won't do you any good, you know. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Reed. A simple glance is enough for me to know you have nothing for me to envy. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? Nothing like this would have happened if we'd had enough staff and proper shifts. So you don't think the blame is ours? We all hold fast here, Dr. Reed. Our methods may differ, but we are all trying to make a difference. 
Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. I don't know if we will. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Well, let's see what you got. They don't have a broken arm and I can't give them a tonic to fix a broken arm. Damn it. Oh, no! It's fine. I pressed the wrong key. They're not dead or anything. It's fine. I meant to press the check the mesmerize thing, not actually mesmerize them. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry, Harvey. Uh, is it just me or do Jonathan's eyes look particularly bad today? Treats me like a. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed, so I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Carpenter, can you build me a coffin to sleep in? Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Please, tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital. I heard Miss Jones call for help from her bedroom. There were some loud noises, like people fighting. All of a sudden, it went quiet. And then the nurse started screaming. Do you know who the nurse was? Not sure, but I think it was Nurse Hawkins. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. You always knew the words to calm the children, Ellen. I think I need to speak with the doctors that are arguing about them probably to unlock their hints. Oh yeah, the rich people. Is your throat doing better? Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Well, looks like they're healthy. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. What? I thought you were healed. Is there something more I can do? What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? I had shouting coming from the first floor. I think we're good on information for that. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. She'd go all the way to hell and back to help me. Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother. Is your mother bothering you? It's a weird question. Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, Doctor. But you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doc. Okay. I'll let you- Good evening, sir. Doctor. Good evening, Doctor. Yeah, tons of hints here that I can't do anything with yet. Tell me more about your... The ambulance... What she met? Right, so we already did that, otherwise we would have heard the super intense mesmerized voice. It's just this one option that we haven't done. 
I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure. I don't expect compensation. What could it's Goodbye, Mrs. Go. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. Nothing new from Beatrice. Where is that other doctor? Ah, must be you. You must be the other one arguing about Harvey. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me. But I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Nice, got a quest. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Do you honestly think it's a test? For... Men of science. Do you realize the implication of that? And and then test by who? What? God? So God is testing men of science and, you know, just a little bit of collateral, millions of people dead. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. It does seem that way. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. 
Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father. Ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. Oh, okay, is that the whole story? This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior. A man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones and flesh. Let's Can go through this real Michael. quick. Just see if there's any new hints. Nope. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. What what exactly is wrong with Harvey Harvey's arm? Like I just assumed it was broken or a, a wound or something, but I'm just trying to imagine what the hell would have to be wrong with him that a blood transfusion would help. Cause this doctor seems to be convinced a blood transfusion would help. What what the hell does a blood transfusion actually help with in that case? I don't know much about blood transfusions. Actually, I know nothing about blood transfusions. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Oh. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Helen didn't bring them with her that night. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. Poor little bleeders? Bleeders? Still one hint left that I can't get to. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Again, I don't know exactly what's wrong with Harvey's arm, but yes, a blood transfusion seems like a bizarre experiment. So in this case... I really hope you're right about this, Dr. Ackroyd. I'm trusting your judgment on this. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Well, I can't seem to do anything more with the whole Harvey storyline. Talk to both, uh, both doctors and Harvey themselves, and no new dialogue. Where were you stationed, sir? 
Did you surf for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. Why do you feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? What really happened? I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. It was an accident. Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. Dead drunk I was. The hotel was a shithole. There was a fire that night. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Bitch never woke me up. Left me to burn. Well, I don't like you anymore. Why lie about it? Come on. It's one thing to come back disfigured by the Germans. And it's another to get injured in an accident that could have happened to anybody. Reconstructive surgery has been very successful for some soldiers. I don't want to wear a bloody mask for the rest of my life. I'd rather stay here and just be forgotten. Oh, hint failed. Hmm. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars, if you get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. So as far as we can go? I guess since I failed that hint, maybe that cut off my ability to go any further. Alright, this is the room where they were murdered. What on earth happened here? Yep, there was a murder. Oh, I found some bodies out back, and I can loot the ones that aren't all tied up. That's grim. Crumpled letter. Dear love, I finally found the missing money for the fee asked by the ambulance driver to bring you to the hospital. Don't worry about nothing now except getting better, for I took care of everything. I asked some of our neighbors, and they told me this Mr. Hooks is something of an honest crook. You may ask for extra money in exchange for a bed, but the bed is then guaranteed. I'm sorry I refused to pay first, and I realize now that the important thing is that you get better soon. The Pembroke Hospital is a good place, I heard, despite the bad behavior of this Milton Hooks. I promise you that everything is okay now. I'll see you in your clean bed as soon as possible. With fondest love, Nicolay. Wait, I'm sorry. Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver, you're charging money for patients to get a fucking ambulance ride. New hint. We need to go speak with them about something, don't we? Charging for an ambulance ride is horrible. It's obviously horrible. So horrible that I want to go smack them across the face and maybe bite them. And guess what? Did you know in America you gotta pay? A shit ton of money to go in an ambulance? Especially if you don't have insurance? Yeah. Although one key difference is that you don't have to pay before they take you. So at least you still get the medical help, but... Yeah, pretty fucked up, huh? Yeah. Healthcare. Great healthcare here. 
Oh, there's a doctor out here that I've never spoken with, by the way. Wait, we're... Oh. <laughs> Hi. I cannot enter. Oh, I should have gone in when I had the chance! How did you do that? Go back in there. You magic person, there's a body. There's a body I can loot. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Always a pleasure to meet a colleague, sir. Especially when he was supposedly dead. A colleague? Are you a doctor, too? Not anymore, sir. I used to be Dr. Rakesh Jadana. Now, I'm just Mr. Jadana. Pawnbroker and humble guardian of this morgue. What do you mean, you used to be a doctor? Was your license revoked? No, sir. It is just that I like to be precise. I run a little pawn shop while taking care of the dead. But I used to be a real doctor. That's strange. Have we met before? I don't think so, sir. Why? When we first talked, you said you were glad to meet me since I was reported dead. Funny story, sir. Your sister came here a few nights ago. Hmm? You were missing, and she was looking for your body. She must be very relieved now. Oh, God. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, so they were looking everywhere for Jonathan. Even the morgue, just in case they had died. Do you work here alone? Yes, very easy work, sir. All I have to do is watch a few bodies. The situation was very different when the main morgue was still open. Why close the hospital's main morgue? It was for sanitary reasons after the beginning of the epidemic. Cadavers had to be moved to the nearest mass grave. Why do you have to watch these bodies? Because these poor fellows have no names. We keep them in case someone comes looking for the missing. Sadly, very rarely happens. Are you afraid or uneasy being surrounded by so many corpses? Why should I? These bodies are empty vessels. Flesh left to decay. Poof. No soul anymore. All gone. An interesting point of view. And quite an exotic one, too. Most people fear, or at least have a respect, for dead flesh. Sir, as a medic during the war, I learned to face my death and the death of others. It's the pain we have to tame. Not death itself. How did you get this job? After I left the army, I worked as an undertaker down by the docks. A dangerous place with many an unpleasant business there. Milton Hooks helped me get a job here. A pawnbroker? I expect you get all types of people here. Yes, sir. All kind of people. For I sell all kind of goods. What kind of goods? With the quarantine, it's not always easy to buy things. So I trade. I exchange. Some people sell. Some others buy. I like to help. Who comes here to trade with you? It's very unhygienic. Even unsafe. Diseases can spread. For the customers. For the hospital. I'm very cautious, sir. I've been a doctor, remember? And all my clients are good people. In fact, I think I only know good people. Since you're not afraid of dying, do you believe in life after death, Rakesh? No. I believe we must do all the good we can while alive. For our time is short, and the obstacles are endless. Do you think you would enjoy immortality? As a concept. I don't think so. Don't mistake me. I love life, and I'd like to live a long life. But everything has to decay, sir. Even goodwill. Was Jonathan fishing for the possibility of turning them into a vampire, if they'd like to be immortal? Do you really believe goodwill cannot last? As I said, sir, everything decays. If I was to never die, Goodness, I would be bored, or worse. And I like to be helpful, sir. Quite depressing, wouldn't you say? Yes, but the good news is, 
We'll all die before losing our humanity, sir. Not all of us. So you're ready to die? No, I am not. I don't fear death, for I won't see it. What troubles me is the pain my death will inflict to those I know. You're a wise man, Mr. Chidana. No, Dr. Reed. I am a foolish man. But I like to think otherwise. An extraordinarily relaxed person amidst these circumstances. Can you tell me anything about recent events in the hospital? Oh, goodness me. This whole story is such a shame, sir. I have no idea how it happened. What are you talking about? Poor, poor Miss Jones. Her body is missing. Someone stole it. Who could have stolen a corpse? That's exactly what I asked myself for the whole day. Who could do such a thing? These are terrible and shameful times, Dr. Reed. Think that's it? Yeah. Please show me what you have. Of course. You have... <laughs> they only have drugs. I thought they sold all sorts of things. Hmm. It never ceases to amaze me how you, the dead, seem peaceful and lost. It's at locked. The same time. I wonder why that chest is behind them locked. I'm thinking probably if you quote unquote embraced them, if you bit them and killed them. Uh, just like how I got stuff from what was it, Clayton Cox or something? How I got like their special weapon and some of their other stuff. I'm guessing if I killed this person, I'd probably get a key, a uh, key to the chest. It's for locked, all right. Otherwise, I can't imagine the purpose of it being there. Okay, Milton, let's have a chat. Good evening. Good evening. Tell me why you're extorting money from some of the patients here. If a patient wants a bed, he'll have to pay me a little fee. That's all. Where did you get the idea for such an immoral scam? Funny you should ask. The first time it was from a patient who bribed me to get a bed. It's only then I realized I could make a fortune. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem, Milton. It's not very good. Admit it. Nurse Hawkins is more than your lover. She's also your partner in crime. Of course she is. How else could I tell which bed is free? I need to know that. Have you no shame? Don't you see the city is crumbling down? Today people are ready to pay to get a hospital bed. Tomorrow we may be fighting for food. Well. Uh. I guess I'm gonna kill them then, aren't I? Milton cheats patients out of their money at this hospital, Pepper. Are you his accomplice? Yes, I am. Is this your definition of being useful? By abusing the sick and poor? No. It is my definition of getting out of this useless life once and for all. Whose idea was it? What difference does it make? We did it together, and I'm guilty as charged. Answer my question. It was my idea first, even though Milton would say it was his, to protect me. Why do you do it? Why not? Most of the sick who paid for a bed are already dead, or will be soon. Don't you see the futility of all this? How can you be affected by the misery around you, and be so heartless at the same time? Which is the real you, Nurse Hawkins? I could ask you the same question, Dr. Reed. Are you more real when you lie to a dying patient? Or when you grant him useless medication. Well, the medication I give patients is definitely not useless. I know for a fact it isn't because their blood quality increases and they get more XP for biting them. Right, well, that's it for that. I can't mesmerize them. Goodbye. I wonder if they're gonna know that Milton Brooks is dead.
Pippa, my princess, flee away while you can, for all is lost. Looking at what I get, some crafting parts, some ammo, a couple other things. I wonder if I get like a key or something. Wow, I had a lot of stuff, and I have a lot of XP now. I've gone ahead and gotten some upgrades, by the way. Yeah, Jonathan is looking absolutely horrible. Is it just the more you level up, the more vampiric you look? Because their eyes were definitely not bloodshot before. I mean, they're kind of creepy, they're pale, but did not look like that. Alright, so I got the next level of claws. So from 220 damage to 265. Also, the cost uh, has gone down from 25 to 20. And I've also gotten a bunch of just kind of passive stuff. Um, what did I do? I increased my blood capacity from 5 to... or plus 5 to plus 10%. Increased my amount of blood that I get from biting from plus 40 to plus 60%. And I got the next level of heal. So instead of plus 5% when I bite, I get plus 10% healing. Whoa. Damn. The effects of my action were serious. We went from almost perfect. It was like 90 something percent and now it's 75. And shit tons of people are sick. Four, five, six, six people are sick. Fatigue, 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 fatigue. <laughs> fatigue, everybody has fatigue. And Pippa is missing. I suspected that might happen. I couldn't feed on them that day, though, because I didn't have the mesmerize skill. That's a shame. I wonder if they'll ever pop up again. Try to take revenge on me or something, or maybe they're just gone for good. But I suspected that would happen when Milton, Milton Hooks had that little uh, line of dialogue when I took him out, saying, like, run, Pippa. Okay. Wow. I'm sorry you ended up on my plane and cold medical bench, sir. I understand you must be very angry about this unfair situation. I managed to arrange to have you buried in the same mass grave as your wife. I hope that might help. Oh, they're so nice. I think there's an invisible wall here, by the way. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Didn't take all that long, actually. I went ahead and gave fatigue medicine to everybody. Three, four, five, six people. Thankfully, I was able to make that much. It seems the Prewin are redoubling their patrols in the district. I must be more careful. We do the Lord's work here. Another one of those holy knights. Okay, so I was going to focus on the missing ingredients quest, and I still am, but it turns out it's also in the same area where I need to go for the main quest. It's in the East End docks. So, let's start to head over there. <laughs> that claw attack is so satisfying. Just a plate store. Just some plates. Pretty, pretty low polygon plates. <laughs> because they're, they're just background plates. They don't need that many polygons. Ooh, please tell me I can go through this. No! Damn it, it's wood! Come on. Quarantine. Die! Whoa! I didn't realize I had the shotgun in my hand. Uh, wait a minute. What? 
Wait, what? Hold, hold, huh? Have I been? I'm confused. Oh. I've, um, I think I've misunderstood how this whole offhand main hand system works because I've been using a two-handed weapon for so long. I thought when you switched... So you have a control to switch either the offhand weapon or switch the main hand weapon. They're separate controls. So you can switch them independently. It's just that, for me, they've pretty much been linked because whenever I go to switch to the double-handed weapon, the double-handed takes up both the main hand and the offhand. So, it basically, it's the same thing, right? Like, whether you switch the main hand or the offhand, if you have a double-handed one, it's going to switch both. So I've just kind of instinctually come to understand that it doesn't matter which one you press. But now it does, because these are both single-handed things. I was like... If I'm using the hacksaw, how come I have the shotgun, right? I thought if I'm using the hacksaw, it's got to be the stake. But no. I get it now. The shadow ball mist thing. Ooh, hideout. Also, I hear a monster. I, are they inside? I cannot enter. Hmm. Is it that way that I want to go? I think so. I said, stay leech. <laughs> Can I get in the back door? No? It's locked, all right. Huh. Some big ones, including one with a flamethrower thingy. I know it's not actually a flamethrower, but whatever. Oh god. Oh, I thought they were burned to a crisp because they're so dark looking. Crossbow. Oh, look at how much blood I get now. About like half a bar. Combat's feeling really good right now. I'm feeling pretty powerful. I guess it's because I've gotten a lot of upgrades and also I'm actually fighting enemies that are around my level now. Like for a while now, I've been fighting enemies that are maybe like five, six levels above me. Like I was under leveled for everything. Okay, I finally made it across the bridge. We are officially at the docks, I think. I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we are going to continue on to the pharmacy, see if we can get the missing ingredients, and then head on to pay a visit to Sean Hampton.